What's up guys, we got new fusion champion announced for the next week. I actually already di did this video once and <laughs> for forgot to put, uh, put the record on, so <laughs> that's on me. I don't really, haven't made a lot of videos about the new champions lately. I have done few of them in the past, but not very regularly. I probably should do it and often people actually ask me to do these on uh, comments and ask me to do more short videos, so let's quickly talk about the new champion. I'm gonna read the description that Plarium gave about him. They often give very comical descriptions and I disagree with them, but on this champion I think it's very, um, very accurate and um, poignant description. Um, so, score it the Hall spawn. Being a pretty straightforward damage dealer, Scorit's role is to utilize the potential of Hex debuff. It will allow this champion to boost their turn meter, ignore the target's defense and increase damage inflicted by Scorit, thus making this champion a strong choice for Hydra battles. Usually they write like, I don't know, 12 paragraphs of, of text and they put some kind of lore stuff and their own jokes and they say that it's gonna be good for Arena and Hydra and Tag Team Arena and they, they list 15 different things and it, it sucks in most or all of them. But I think this description was very accurate. It's not gonna be like Armands, not some earth shattering champion that is gonna uh, change the meta. But I think it will be a champion that you don't want to skip. A solid uh, fusion champion for Hydra probably in one of your auto teams that most people are going to use. I'm not sure yet if it's going to be something that the top accounts are going to use. Probably not, but maybe. If he has high multipliers, maybe, but probably not. I mean, they're going to run like double Yumeko and Tranda, and there's not really a room for this champion. But I think for like basically everybody watching this video, probably you are going to put him in one of your teams. But so, on the A A1, 50% uh, chance of applying debuff spread if they have, um, and, and it uh, um, spreads the hex if they have it, if they don't it's one random buff, and it books to 60%, and it's basically to, you know, keep high uptime of the hex debuff, which is one of the best debuffs that you can get on Hydra, like the other, um, other two good ones is decrease speed and block bus debuff. You might not really need block bus debuff on every team comp. You might have burns or you might kill the head so fast that you don't need it. But Hex is basically the best one for damage and decrease speed is super good for lapping the boss. So you can basically beat this champion in any type of Hydra team that you might do, especially since he doesn't just do Hex, but he's also a damage dealer for the team. Then on the A2, it uh, gives himself 50% attack buff. And it's a single target hit, but if they have Hex, then it hits everybody. So it's basically AoE nook that um, gives him attack buff and ignore shields if they have Hex. And maybe that can be useful sometimes when... Um, I don't remember what's the name of the head, when one of the heads put, puts a shield and maybe, you know, it can be annoying if they swallow one of your champions and then they get the massive shield. Maybe this could be relevant sometimes in those situations, but I don't think the ignore shield is usually gonna be useful. Then on the A3, attacks all enemies and before attacking puts a hex debuff on them and then he gets 20% increased damage for each hex debuff that he placed and heals himself by 20% for each of the debuffs that were resisted and it books down the 3 turn cooldown so it's not super long and obviously for this skill it will be super vital to actually especially this skill to know the multipliers because if you can get like 40%, 80% uh, damage increase from the effect, uh, increase from the effect, and then you can get 15% ignore defense from the passive. 
if the multiplier is high, this skill might actually be bonkers, but we will see how bonkers it is. Usually when we have th this type of skills, the multipliers are not that high, but it um, remains to be seen. By the way, I have asked a million times for the <laughs> community managers to put the multipliers in these briefs, and so has many other content creators. I don't know why they don't want to give us that information, but for some reason they are keen on hiding it. But maybe they will change their mind about it later, because back in the day, maybe some people remember, but they didn't use to show the books in the description of the champion kits either. And people always had to set, speculate that can you book the skill to under person with debuffs or not and we wouldn't know until the champion was actually released and then after a long time i think it was maybe like two years in the game or it wasn't at the start then finally they changed it after content creators asked it trillion times maybe they will do that with the multipliers too and then as far as the passive goes feels turn meter by 10 percent when attacking targets without hex and then 15% ignore defense if they have X debuff on them. And basically with his A1 and A3, you would think that he would have pretty much 100% uptime on the Hex with the 15% ignore defense. I mean, it's not 50%. 50% is way better than 15%. Just saying, it's it sounds... OP almost, but it's way way worse than Wukong or Siegfund or Protoss and so on. But it's still gonna be a good damage increase, especially when you know the Hydra heads actually have like insane defense levels, like a nightmare. I think is the highest one, like 12,000 defense or 15,000. But they are in the like, I think the um, okay, don't quote me on this one. I think the lowest defense on Nightmare is 8,000, maybe. And they are like somewhere in that range, but they have really closely high defense, so it's a very good thing. And when you calculate the ignore defense with um, um, with the eighty percent increased damage on the A three from the effect, it might potentially hit super hard if if he has good multipliers. But it remains to be seen. Also, when we look at this champion from this picture and other picture here, let me show it to you. He does not look that impressive, and it kind of, you know... <laughs> in the video I made before this that I failed to record, I was saying that he doesn't look legendary champion, but I guess this is like art where he misses the particle effects and so on. Let me... Uh, where is it? Let me pull up a video of... Um, of his actual... Um, wait. I guess I should have had it ready. Okay, there you go. He here's how he looks in practice with his animation. So, pretty cool looking champion. Nothing bad to say about there. I mean, it's not the best looking champion in the game. Raid has plenty of good looking champions. Not that I care about it really, but um, yeah. Anyway, I think it's kind of mid-tier fusion. Nothing game-breaking, but probably something that you don't want to skip, unless there's something that I'm missing. If I if I totally missed out something that um, is very big deal, then let me know in the comments. But I think it's probably probably the way that um, I'm thinking about it. Anyway, that's that's what I that's all I have to say. I need to hurry up because I need to go go to stream. But I wanted to make this video when you know. Parium gives us the information about the champion and then you have like two hours before you're allowed to publish it or something like that and they expect us to like make the videos at the right time so let me get this done quickly before I stream and <laughs> and then I can publish it during it but that's it for this video have a nice day and see ya.